Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna go over your walking log modules and what you're supposed to do. So to do that, we're first gonna take at a look at module one, and then this will apply for modules two and three. We'll also look at an example for what your walking log for each module will be. For module one, if we open up the Word document, you'll see for module one, uh, in the time frame from uh, where the beginning of class until the end of module one, you need to walk or jog either 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of vigorous activity. Um, so you'll have to pick either to do moderate activity or vigorous, and you'll have to complete that many minutes worth of walking and jogging, uh, specifically time meant where you are um, just walking and jogging, not doing anything else like walking around a store. Um, you'll set that aside. And you'll have to accumulate that many minutes for module one. You will log all of your activity and put it on a Word document and upload that to D2L in the assigned Dropbox uh, by the due date. The log will need to total the number amount of minutes. Um, so that's 150 minutes of moderate or 75 minutes of uh, vigorous. Uh, for each session of activity, so every time that you're walking or jogging, that could be, um, could take you four or five sessions, it could take you 10 or 11 sessions, it really doesn't matter. But for each one of those sessions where you're walking and jogging, uh, you will need to provide a screenshot of your activity from your uh, electronic device that's tracking that. Uh, and you will also have to put some other information below those screenshots, and I'll show you an example of that. But you'll have to include your age, your maximum heart rate, which has gone over in your PowerPoints in your book of how to find your uh, estimated maximum heart rate. You'll have to do your average pace in minutes per mile. So, um, you would put something like it took me nine minutes and 20 seconds for an average mile time for my run. So let's say you traveled uh, two miles uh, for this for this particular session and it took you 20 minutes. Your average pace was a 10 minute mile. Uh, you'll need to calculate your percent of heart of maximum heart rate achieved during your run. So if your maximum heart rate was 200 and you maintained an average heart rate of 100 your uh, percent of maximum heart rate would be 50%. Uh, and you'll also have to do the same thing for heart rate reserve. Uh, I understand some of you may not be using uh, heart rate monitors that are attached to your app, but you can palpate or feel for your pulse yourself without uh, using a heart rate monitor. And this has gone over in your book as well. Uh, you'll also want to note the weather during the run. Uh, was it sunny? Was it cloudy? Was it raining? And then also what surface were you running on, such as grass or concrete or um, maybe a track, actually uh, like a professional style track, uh, anything like that. Um, realize that you can do for each session of activity that you log, you can do no more than 60 minutes of moderate activity or 30 minutes of vigorous activity in any individual session. Um, and then make sure that also you can only log 120 minutes of physical activity per day or uh, 60 minutes of vigorous activity uh, per day. So that means really you can do two sessions per day if you want to, um, but you can't do it for more than these total amount of times, uh, making you space out your activity across each module. Uh, realize that if you want to participate in vigorous activity, uh, you must have a heart rate monitor that links to your app. Um, so that on the screenshot of the app, uh, it'll actually say your average heart rate. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you do not have a heart rate monitor, you heart rate monitor, you will automatically do moderate activity, no matter how fast or how hard you go. If you do decide to do vigorous activity, uh, vigorous activity is defined as 75% of your maximum heart rate. Um, so if uh, calculations here, so if you're 20 years old your estimated uh, max heart rate is 200. You multiply that by 0.75. That means that for every workout that you do for module one, if you choose to do vigorous activity, uh, you'll have to have an average heart rate of 150 or greater uh, for the entire workout. Realize if you uh, do choose to do vigorous activity, uh, each module must be completed either as moderate activity or vigorous activity, uh, meaning that if you choose to do vigorous activity for the entire or for module one, or for the first session at least, every single, uh, all of those minutes have to be vigorous. Or if you choose to do moderate, all of those minutes have to be moderate. Um, basically meaning you have to choose to do 150 minutes or 75 minutes. Um, 
but realize that if you choose module one is vigorous, module two, you could drop down to moderate and that's perfectly okay. There's a module to module um, decision that you have to make. Uh, when you provide screenshots uh, from whatever app you decide to use for tracking your walking and jogging, it must include the date and time that you did your run. Um, it must include the distance, so how far you went. It could be miles, it could be kilometers, doesn't matter. Time spent in activity, so how many minutes did you actually do it? Uh, you also have to do a map of your run, uh, so it should show me exactly where you ran, run. Um, it doesn't have to be a super detailed map, but it should show me that you were kind of going around. Uh, so this also means that you cannot um, you cannot walk and jog on a treadmill for this course. Um, that is not going to be accepted um, as I want to see where you actually ran and where you were headed. Um, and then finally, if you're using vigorous uh, minutes, you will need to show me the average heart rate during your activity. And this just kind of explains what we've already went over through the syllabus. Um, so as you're doing module one, you're gonna do an activity log. And once you're done with that activity log, um, if you go into module one, you'll see the next thing is a Dropbox for module one. And you'll simply upload a single Word document that includes all of um, the information for every session into, um, into D2L by the deadline. Uh, and the deadline for this particular one is uh, right there. So uh, we're gonna go back real quick and I'm gonna show you um, as you go through, we go to walking modules. Module two is the exact same. You have your Dropbox here for module two. And if you click on module two, that'll start once module one is over. It shows you that it is just 200 minutes of moderate activity or 100 minutes of vigorous activity. So you can see the guidelines are exactly the same. You're doing exactly the same thing. But in this particular uh, session uh, or this particular module, you are increasing the amount of time. And then module three is the same thing, it just has more increased time. So you're working your way up as you um, go throughout the semester. So we'll take a quick look at the example that I've built just for you to look at. It includes several different um, apps uh, that I pulled from to show you different ways that it can look depending on what app you're using, but they all give the right information. So you see I put my name up here, Jho. I said walk jog summer 2019. Um, module walking log example, you can just call yours your uh, module one walking log. And so here, uh, module 150 minutes of moderate activity is what I chose. So that's really important to tell me it's module one. And then chose, tell me you chose um, 150 minutes of moderate activity or 75 minutes of um, vigorous activity. And then I told you before I even got down here, which is going to be super helpful for me as I grade, my total activity time was 151 minutes for this module. So if we notice walk one, it's very simple. You just say walk one. Um, I provided you a screenshot and it tells me uh, Saturday, June 6th at 3.57 p.m. So it has the time and date. I went for a 5.51 run. Uh, you can see that it has a little bit of a track here. So it shows me that map of my start and my finish. And I went in a big circle around uh, a river. It tells me my distance was 5.51 miles. The duration was 54 minutes and 20 seconds. Um, it tells me my average pace, which is really good. Um, so that can be helpful. Uh, it tells me kind of my average cadence. And in this particular version, it also even told me heart rate. So I could have done vigorous uh, as my uh, average heart rate was over the vigorous, but I chose not to. And then below the screenshot, I put all those things that I needed. Some of those were even given on the screenshot. Um, and so they can be helpful sometimes as well. My age, my maximum heart rate, my pace, which matches up here, uh, my percent of maximum heart rate, my percent of heart rate reserve, the weather was sunny and the surface was concrete. And so that was activity one, or walk one, walk two, using a different app, you can kind of see the map that we go through here, um, gives me time and date of the run, uh, tells me that it was 29 minutes and 33 seconds. Uh, tells me the distance, tells me the average pace, even tells me my number of steps. As you can see, this version doesn't have heart rate attached to it. Um, we then have all the same things that we had before. I just typed them in, made it really easy uh, to see. It was more on dirt, it was cloudy that day, heart rate was a little bit different. Uh, and this heart rate, I just calculated um, palpating my heart rate instead of using a heart rate monitor. Walk number three, in this particular case, this app breaks it up into getting all the information with several different screenshots. 
And so we can see the map here. We can see the distance, the duration. Um, this one gives me average pace, average speed, maximum speed. This one gives you a lot of good information. Um, kind of lets you see um, how you've been doing for different months uh, and different things like that. It gives me the date and time up here. And so you can just see different information uh, depending on exactly what you're wanting. And then again, all the information that I want through here. Walk number four gives me the date, gives me the time, uh, gives me a map, gives me everything that I need to know, distance, duration, average speed, all those things that I was looking for. And again, we have this down here kind of explaining it. And so once you add up all four of those particular walking sessions, uh, you get a total of 151 minutes. I submit that as one document into the um, Dropbox and we are good to go and that'll be graded and that's how easy it is uh, and you get 100 for that particular walking module. Um, so this should explain everything. If you have questions, please email me at jhowardislands.edu. Other than that, I hope you have a great semester and uh, good luck.